What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Okami Den. I'm What the Fnu, and I'm the best there is at what I do. I'm just the only one who does it. <laughs> I wish I was the only one who does it. I've recently been made aware of the fact that Mr. Half a Million Subscribers himself has taken on the lib has taken on the duties of playing this game as well. So. <laughs> Bottom line, I need to freaking kill this LP while the material I offer is still relevant and has a chance of being seen on here as opposed to on there. And I'm not gonna say a damn thing about when these videos are coming out either. At this point, whatever happens, happens when it happens. That's all there is to that. Oh boy. So, what are we doing here? Fighting enemies that we've already seen? Jeez, the... Still getting used to the buttons again? You take... Isn't that weird? You take a month break off of something, and suddenly the game you played not so long ago just feels completely foreign and different. It's strange, isn't it? I only say it's strange because... I pick up a game like Super Mario World off of my shelf here, and I play through it like it was yesterday. Like... I know all of the level layouts by heart. I know all the secrets, the paths in the overworld. I could tell you right off the top of my head that there's a 3-up moon in Yoshi's Island 1 if you go back there with the cape. So, and yet, I pick up a game like this after just a month and nothing really sticks in my mind. Is it really that the game just leaves no impression on my memory? I don't mean to put that in a negative light. Like I said before, this game isn't perfect, but it's still a good game. It's just... <sighs> Jeez, two enemies in a... I, I gotta say, does that happen to anybody else? I'd love to know if this is just me or if other people actually suffer this kind of problem. Is it just modern games? Is it just... The fact that I played them so much when I was a kid, as opposed to this, which I'm just kind of playing casually for a project I never really intended to start. Well, uh, sorry, I should reword that. A project I started for the wrong reasons. You know, going back to you-know-who. Believe it or not, I made a cardinal sin with this Let's Play, and I'm going to admit it right now. I didn't start it for the correct reasons. I actually started doing Okamiden simply because... Chugga was doing the normal Okami, and I wanted to give people something to watch while he was doing that to kind of feed into that a little bit. Yeah, I was dumber back then. I was a lot less wise. I did things for the wrong reason, but not anymore. Not anymore. Speaking of not anymore, is this an enemy we've... No, it is not. Well, finding a whole bunch of enemies that we've already seen in the past, you know what this means. Super Fighting Montage in 3, 2, 1, here we go!
Phew. That's that. Superhero time. Shinkenja. Decade. Here we go. <laughs> God, I can't believe I've got that stuck in my head now. I have been watching a lot of Shinkenja lately. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Shinkenja is the Japanese version of Power Rangers Samurai. Uh, something... I would be watching the American version if I could get the chance, but unfortunately I haven't been able to find the footage anywhere. And from what I understand, the show has actually moved on to its second half, where it is now known as Super Samurai. And I'd rather not watch the second half without seeing the first, so yeah, there you go. I'm trying to get caught up on the story. The problem with trying to do that, though, is that... You know, for all the similarities, the incredible similarities, like, from what I could find, the intro to both is almost identical. Virtually identical. There's maybe one or two shot or scene changes, but that's it. Like, I knew Power Rangers relied heavily on the Sentai footage, but damn. But seriously, um, one major difference was the tie-in with a series called Kamen Rider, which I didn't even... What the hell? Oh, I see. Ah uh ha -huh, I see what you did there, game. So that's how he stole the wet and dry jewels from her. Mm-hmm. I see. We're tying everything together, aren't we? And that was her first meeting of us. Oh, great. Well, look who's back, everybody. Back in pink. Kinda back in black. At least his pants are black. Hmm. You know, those do kinda look like khakis. Would that make them Jack Blacks? I have no idea what that had to do with anything. So. <laughs> or Black Jacks in this case. Jack Slacks? There we go! I knew there was a pun in there somewhere. I just kinda had to fish around for it a little bit. I knew, my brain knew there was a joke in there somewhere. My mouth just needed to catch up to it. Slack Black, starring in Okamiden, this summer only in theaters. In IMAX and real 3D. You know, I actually haven't whole, got a whole lot of movies to stop. What were you thinking about before? Finish your story. Shinkanger, right. I'll talk about movies in a little bit. The thing is, halfway through the Japanese version of Samurai, we actually find we actually find out there's this tie-in episode with a series called Kamen Rider, and I wasn't even sure that this existed. Now, see, the thing is, um, Kamen Rider is the same sort of genre. It's a Sentai series where a bunch of teenagers go around in Technicolor outfits trying to fight monsters. But basically, it's more geared towards an adult audience from what I could see. Because I wasn't going to watch the crossover episode without knowing at least the basics of the other franchise. You know what I mean? I wanted to know why those people were there. Why their being there meant anything to anybody. And just the fact that... Uh, but the problem is... So I... Looked all I scoured the internet to try and find episodes of Decade. Common Rider Decade is the series we're talking about. But guess what? Decade is kind of a crossover in itself. Because it's celebrating what I think is the tenth anniversary of Common Rider on Japanese airwaves, hence the name Decade. But it's kind of celebrating it in a weird way. See, Common Rider Decade is tasked that's his actual name, Decade, by the way. How many times can I say decayed in a single episode? Decayed, decayed. 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 A body is decayed. Anywho's. Ugh. He is tasked with the task of, of going to other worlds and killing every other common Rider from show continuity. So I'm like, guys, I just want to watch some freaking Power Rangers. Please. Please, please. So, but all in all, I am enjoying the series very much. I especially like this one episode. I won't, it was actually a Ranger-specific episode, 
to expand their character or something. I won't spoil who, just in case you're interested in watching, but it was about this monster that could... It was about this monster that could hurt people literally by insulting them. It could turn internal pain into outward suffering. I am not kidding. And I love... I think that's why I got into Power Rangers in the first place when I was a kid. It's just because of that basic, cool creativity. Some of those monsters were really interesting. Anyone else remember Rita's purse monster? I gotta tell you, that was one of the... Are you people still talking? For real now. How long is this cutscene gonna go on for? This is getting a tad bit ridiculous. Yeah, old man, I know you're full of inner fire and brimstone and whatever the hell you... And calligraphy and whatever the hell you got, but really, I, I've i got people who are watching me for entertainment, so if you could just... Oh, by the way, I didn't really point this out before, but I, I hate to give this game... I hate to give a time travel arc credit for anything, but the fact that they had to leave the lucky hammer on the ship, that was a good bit of forward thinking. Now we understand why it's there. It wasn't even intentional. Chibi just left it there. Oh, Captain, no, why? I know this is supposed to be a really touching moment and everything, but I don't know why, but I'm surprisingly unfazed by the fact that we have to leave these guys behind. I know, I know, that makes me a terrible person. I'm going to hell, and you wish my mom would die of pancreatic cancer and all that jazz, but... I'm really not feeling anything here. Maybe it's just the fact that I just want to get this project out of the way. Maybe it's the... Oh. Uh, okay, that, that made me stop. Maybe I feel a little bad now. You made a puppy cry. Bad water dragon. Bad. Well, well, well. A purple sky and black wood comprising the entrance. You know what that means, guys. There's only one thing that could possibly mean. Oh, hey, there's a familiar face if I ever saw one. <laughs> you know that guy? All too well, actually. That's the great Susano? Oh, so you've heard of him. This guy is some kind of celebrity, apparently. Not that I would know anything about that. I know that's what goes down, but I still can't believe he's the one. Yeah, especially a guy shaking that badly, right? <laughs> Once again, swinging around that wooden sword. Dude, how many times are you gonna do that same flippy trick with the flute? At least learn a new one. You're a one-trick pony, and it's really starting to get old. Customers need something new. You come up with a new trick, or else I'm turning you to glue, pal. We're running a business here. We need to keep consistent. Ugh, even his language bugs me. After all this time, I still can't get over it. Kuro is just a lame-ass character. Like, dude, like, do you, like, understand, like, where I'm coming from? You know? Dude? I, it's kind of interesting if you do it well. It was novel for a while, but these days you gotta be really careful when you try to pull a surfer personality. Other. Cooney? Hello? The kid is the Cooney guy you were talking about? Yeah, didn't you hear me? Oh, wait. Joke's on me on that one, I guess. Ever the brave Susano going way out of his way to save this kid. Good on you, man. He's not breathing. Well, give him mouth to mouth. You know, fun fact, I actually... Oh, jeez. He actually is giving him mouth to mouth. <laughs> 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 so, so, <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I'm good now. 
I completely forgot what I was going to talk about now. That just caught me way off guard. <laughs> Jesus, I spent a whole episode talking about Power Rangers and God knows what now. What Common Rider and how I couldn't get two continuity straight. It's just, entering another culture is just really odd. I know that that should be plain obvious, right? But it doesn't really hit you until you actually try it. Like, getting into that show, I wasn't really sure if some parts of some of the episodes were just weird because they were actually weird, or if it was just a cultural thing. Like, some of the character archetypes just didn't make sense in my mind. I guess they're common... Do people actually act like this in Japan? Like, there are, are these common personality traits of real people? I guess it might be um, down a little bit for the sake of kids to kind of make them fun and interesting for them to watch. But then again, Power Rangers isn't really just a kid's show in Japan. I mean, in that episode I was actually talking about, the monster actually calls this one middle-aged looking businessman a pervert. And that's the word that hurts him and sends him flying off into a building or something. So take from that what you will. Ah, oh, man. Oh, now I remember what I was talking about. Kuro. I mean, a surfer personality is great if you do it well, but the problem is you kind of have to do it well. And I don't think they achieved that with this guy. Flamboyant and wave riding just kind of don't go together. You know what I mean? It's like mixing... As much as I hate to bash on Japan twice in one episode, it's kind of like how I feel about Pocky. I mean, it's chocolate and biscuit. They don't really add to one another. I taste them separately, but they don't really mesh well in your mouth. So, what's my timer looking at right now? 25 minutes? Holy cow! Not counting the speed-up montage in the middle for you guys, but for 20, for me, it's 25 minutes. So, at the entrance to the Moon Cave, I will call this an episode. So, next time on Let's Play Okamiden, we will begin the end. This is the Moon Cave, I'm What the Fnu, and until then, I'll see you guys later. Later, everybody.